Well, good morning, everyone. My name's Brian, and today is Monday, January 22nd, 2024, and this is episode 616 of the Lots Project podcast titled We May Need an Arc, and I'll be chatting about the end of this cold snap coming up, uh, USPS and UPS standstill, upcoming forecast, and more. Guys, I think it's going to be coming above zero this morning, and it's not going to go back down below zero for at least six days, seven days, something like that. And I am super, super excited about it. So let's uh, see who's hanging out in the live chat, see who's in that coffee crew this morning, and we'll get to all these topics in just a second. Good morning, good morning, Haas, hanging out way early, making sure you grab two pairs from each farm animal. And Kyle quickly realizes that there's a problem with that because Kyle knows biology and Kyle says he has three male dogs. I already see a problem here. Yeah, I don't even know if I'd be taking the dogs on the ark with me. I don't know. I don't know. They would have to, uh, they would definitely have to prove their worth. Uh, K Bonk, good morning. Bone broth morning there. It must be kind of chilly. Uh, Hunter hanging out in, on Twitch. Hunter t- tested out my life hack from Friday. Uh, posted a video in the Telegram chat, and it worked. He he acted surprised that it worked, but uh, the life hack from Friday's show about muting the muting the the gas station video news pumps. So that's nice. That's nice. Glad it worked for you. Glad it worked. Uh, Jim, good morning. Thank you for hanging out. Pip making coffee now. Folgers or Maxwell House, and. Uh, Dixon says time to get the Wonder Bread bags out. Good morning, Chris. How are we doing? Uh, Wonder bags. Wonder bags used to be for us was when um, when it was cold and snow. This is just flat out. The snow will be gone today, I imagine. No, maybe tomorrow. It's not supposed to ra- start raining until this evening, but uh, temperatures are coming up. Snow is melting right now, but uh, man. We got some rain coming. We got some rain coming and we got a lot of moisture that is going to be dissipated into the ground um, in the next day or so with all this snow finally melting off. Uh, we've been below freezing for so for for so long. I say that like uh, it didn't go from October till June in Minnesota. Uh, we've been below freezing for seven days and the ground, the ground is actually hard. Um, and before even before the freeze, we didn't absorb water well. So I'm not sure how this is going to go out. Oh, go down, go down. It's definitely, definitely an interesting experience. And it's nice. Um, <laughs> Chris Dixon says, yeah, that and re- leaky rubber boot liners. I, I mean, if I ate uh, if I ate Wonder Bread, I would definitely be saving the bags. Let's just say that maybe I'll have to get uh, maybe I'll have to use grocery bags now. I don't think they had plastic shopping bags when uh, when I was a kid and putting bread bags on my feet. I wonder if like the t-shirt bags that you get at grocery stores would work now. Hmm, interesting, interesting. Um, but yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be. It's going to be interesting to see how it all plays out. So today I'm going to recap kind of like the last week and thoughts in the thoughts from this uh, Arctic blast or polar vortex or whatever the hell they call it. Uh, The damn cold and ice and snow here in Tennessee that basically shut down the state. I got more updates on that. My thoughts from it. And um, yeah, the upcoming weather. Uh, it was, um, I'm glad it's over. Let's say that. Kyle says, uh, four degrees up in New Hampshire. Um, and K Bonk in Philly saying it's 18. <laughs> Dixon says, I guess you could vacuum seal them. <laughs> nice. Nice. Um, yeah, so I mean, let's get right into it. What's uh, what's in the cup today? In the cup, we got uh, GSD blend, GSD 
blend this morning. That was one of the original Lots Project blends. Uh, super light, super crisp, and made intentionally for that uh, that guy that wants to get shit done. It's a little higher on the caffeine scale and uh, without adding extra caffeine, but roasted super light and super clean, super crisp, and it will uh, it will definitely get you going in the morning. I know it's a favorite of James's up there in, in Michigan, and uh, yeah, you should try some too, foodforestfarms.com foodforestfarms.com use lots five for a discount and uh, get five percent off i guess if you're listening to the audio and you want a one time ten percent off to give it a try you can grab uh grab it for ten percent off but that's a one time use coupon unless you gotta change your ip i guess but man check out food forest farms and if you like the coffee if you've tried it and you're not a member of the c4 club where you can get uh where you can get 40 dollars worth of coffee i think the the savings now is uh he sent it to me yesterday and i forgot to write it down but the savings now he had to increase his off the shelf price as c4 stayed stayed stagnant c4 prices did not go up with his uh, retail prices so we're saving even more as a c4 member it's a phenomenal deal, phenomenal deal just on the coffee alone, but add in all the other perks. And uh, man, who doesn't like to buy silver at spot with free shipping? That's an option with C4. That's an option. So check it out. Foodforestfarms.com. Support local, local, support small businesses. He's a local, uh, local Pacific Northwest small business, but support small businesses, especially ones that you can grab online and have shipped to you once a month, once a month. Kyle says GSD is my favorite. Um, Dixon says it's 8F here. Supposed to be C40 this week. Nice. So is that how this winter is going, guys? <coughs> like abnormally, abnormally warm. And then um, just a cold snap everywhere. Because it seemed like it was pretty much everywhere was uh, just a shit show for uh, about a week there. I don't know. I don't know. Um, man, so a week. It's been a week. It's been a week. I was uh, sitting there yesterday as we had a beautiful day. It was sunny. Uh, I was in the 30s, so it, it felt um, it felt warmer than that, you know, when you go out and, and the sun's just beating on you. And, I, like, I was out in a, in a hoodie, uh, a couple of undershirts, and, um, and a pair of just a normal pair of pants where i wasn't cold we were filming filming videos um filming videos outside pip says kind of normal weather in florida (laughs) what is what is normal in florida though uh but it was was, it was nice outside it was nice outside and then when we came inside i was sitting and i was thinking back over the week and um trying to trying to kind of just get a handle on the whole thing as a whole um for the show this morning and i was like you know i I was so busy so busy trying to um deal with something that was not i don't want to say it wasn't planned but it isn't our ideal situation um having to keep warm in this trailer in those temps like we that's why we left minnesota (laughs) not not that we would be living in this in minnesota if we were there but we left because of the cold um we had planned originally you know to be someplace where it didn't get cold um at least this cold and you know as we traveled and as we kind of decided we want to sit down um we wanted to sit down and experience the winter here. Of course we get hit with a, uh, a once in 40 year storm, once in 40 year weather snap. I was talking to someone and they said, um, I think they said 94, 94 was the last time it was like this. 1994 last century. Um, so of course the, the shitty weather followed us last year in Texas. We got, uh, we got told that it was the coldest that had been there. Uh, we didn't get the snow. Oh no, it was the rainiest. <laughs> I, I can't remember what is, which, uh, which, uh, extreme weather condition we were, 
we were uh, dealing with. I think it was they told us that it hadn't rained that consistently for that long in uh, where we were staying in Texas for quite a while. Um, Kyle said he was two at 94 because <laughs> you're a baby. I was getting ready to uh, to enter my uh, second half of uh, my sophomore junior year in high school. I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> something like that. Um, but yeah. And then when we went to Colorado this summer on our trip up to South Dakota on the way back, we were told that uh, they got more rain in two two weeks or four weeks than they had gotten in four years. Uh, just just stupid. Like we're we're following around. Oh, here comes Jim to tell us how old he is. Back in 94, I was using a lithograph. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, it seems like we're getting the extremes everywhere we go. Um, you know, and, and it, it worked out. It, we, we survived this. We experienced it um we know we can do it we can make it work we also determined that this state can't handle it um hunter says i was walking to school uphill both ways in oregon <laughs> um <laughs> now kyle's now kyle is jim's uh jim's jim's bodyguard He's he's got um, he must feel that uh, the elder he has to take care of his elders <laughs> Xerox copy of machines no not Xerox <laughs> not Xerox Jim's Jim's used to the carbon copies <laughs> he, he had to hand hand write all all the carbon copies <laughs> uh, anyway we've we've realized that Tennessee. Uh, we fared better than Tennessee. Um, woo We won. <laughs> we won. Uh, Tennessee absolutely is a is a, a shit show. An absolute shit show now. Uh, still, still, uh, we're a week in. <laughs> Dixon says, "Press hard, press hard. You'll make se making several copies." Yes, yes. Oh God, yeah. Um, hey, Kyle. Kyle, this is a question for the young guy out there. I um have you ever used or seen uh, a manual credit card machine? My first job, oh well, actually my first several jobs, um well my first job, I don't think credit cards were even really a thing um as much like as a everyday usage. Uh then um the second uh, this is one of my second jobs, like one of my real jobs. Uh, I used the the hand credit card thing. That's what we used for uh, for not sweep. There was no swiping of credit cards. <laughs> but Tennessee is a mess. Tennessee is definitely definitely a mess. Um, nowhere around here has water. Kyle just mentioned that he's driving around making sure everyone has water. Um. Do you have water problems there, Kyle? You guys aren't, you guys aren't, um, you guys aren't set up for the cold like that. Hmm. <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> Jim, Jim says they had a book, and this might actually be true, but it made me laugh. Jim says that they had a book to look up the number to check it, check to see if it was a good card or not. <laughs> Back when Jim was checking the book, there was only like 75 credit cards in the country. <laughs> Hunter says the system went down to the supply house and then teach the guys how to hand write invoices. Oh, God, that's no good. <laughs> oh, Kyle is making sure that all the animals had it. Okay. All right. I thought you were, I thought you were driving around making sure your neighbors had water because that's what's going around on around here. Uh, no place has water. 
our town, our town, luckily the town, our town, um, the town I'm staying in. I don't think I'm, I don't know if I can actually call it my town yet. Um, Haas said they call it 800 number for verification. I remember uh, calling the 800 number in on purchases over a certain dollar amount. I do remember that. I do, do remember that. Um, but the town that we're in is lucky, knock on wood. We'll see today. They're putting out all sorts of um, watch out for your broken pipe warnings because somehow they, they had frost set in in a week and they're going to, they think they're going to have a bunch of heaving coming out of the frost today. I don't know. I don't know. It didn't sound, uh, it didn't add up in my head. I don't, I didn't think that um, seven days, seven days of sub freezing temperatures with a layer of thick, wet, ice rock frozen snow on top would really drive a frost in that far but man what do i know what do i know i don't know the soil types around here it is really weird um it, it's non-absorbent so i don't know if that changes the things with uh, driving that frost down but uh, i know the pipes aren't very deep in tennessee i've helped uh, i've helped some people dig them up already <coughs> since we've been here but uh they're saying that uh, it could cause more water problems with the frost coming out. I kind of chuckled when I read it. I was like, the frost coming out? <laughs> it's like a seven-week seven, seven week process in Minnesota. Uh, they're like, yeah, when it starts raining today, there could be a lot of shifting in the ground breaking pipes. <laughs> and Chris Dixon says if the plumbing shallow could be an issue. Yeah, I, I mean, I wasn't. I wasn't. Um, I was just wondering how how deep that frost could get in that quickly with, um, I mean, it snowed eight inches before as it was freezing. So there was uh, a nice layer of insulation there the whole, most of the time that it was cold. So I don't know how deep it could have got. We'll find out. We'll find out for sure. But regardless, um, K-Bong says, what are the water lines? Two feet. Yeah, maybe maybe uh really depends a lot of it's diy uh, a lot of it's diy uh from what it appears and um a lot of <laughs> actually some of the ones i helped help dig up they didn't even use like real water line <laughs> they didn't know um <laughs> they didn't know they used like um what was it the thin walled pvc and they didn't use uh the proper unions they like they they heated and stretched up like another piece of pipe and used that for a union the one that i was helping fix it was just an absolute shit show and i'm like oh huh, no wonder there's a leak in the yard and that wasn't even in the in the frost it wasn't even in the frost so i'm curious to see what happens but all the towns around here are out of water so here's how this goes down <laughs> I have heard more about fucking dripping water to keep your pipes from freezing um, in the last two weeks than I have heard in my entire life, in my entire life. And so many people had to drip their faucets instead of just like being prepared for something like this and being able to drain their water and, and run with uh, jugs like we did or something. Um, I don't know. I, I think that we're just, we're prepared for it. We've, we, we kind of live that way when we're boondocking. So it wasn't a big deal for us, but um, it sounds like everybody dripped their faucets and ran the fucking tanks dry in the, in the town, all the towns. Coupled that with uh, broken pipes and leaking, leaking water, they drained all their water reserves and they were popping up left and right. Today was this one, and later on in the day, the town next to us, and then down the town down the road. And there's a significant size city. I don't know if I want to call it a city. I don't know what the population is, but it's it's a it's a decent geographical area, and it seems like there was a there's a a, a larger population. It's where I go to do um, laundry. There's a Walmart, a Kroger, a Lowe's. So I mean, it's not a small town. They're completely out of water too. How? 
Like how are how are, do do we just like I'm trying to figure out did everybody just drip all their water in their pipe in all their pipes every single faucet they went and just uh, like opened her up? How do you drain the whole town's um <laughs> how do you drain the whole town's water? Uh Chris Dixon says still using water towers. There's water towers every here everywhere here. And when they are referring to running out of water, they're saying that their tanks are running dry. And then they lose pressure. And then everything's a boil water, even beyond like when it comes back on, everything's a boil water because they lost pressure. Um yeah, it's a mess. Pip says, I feel guilty for chuckling at the water running out. I'm like you know, so here's the deal. I, uh, our, our hose bib, I took special care. <laughs> so the way we're set up is we have a water, um, we have a valve and a meter at the road in a, like a sprinkler box type. If you got, it's got lawn sprinklers, uh, the, the in-ground boxes are kind of what they use here. That's how deep the stuff is. Uh, so we have, Coming from the road, we have a box with a meter and a valve. And then for our property, because we there's a couple RV sites here, uh, basically, instead of going into the house, it just goes into another sprinkler box closer to us with a, a hose bib or a spigot in there, uh, just like the outside of your house. But it's down like a, in a bottom of box. So when we knew that it was going to freeze and we knew it was going to freeze significantly. I was like, I don't want to leave the water in the tanks. Uh, it will be easier to try to maintain the camper instead of trying to heat under the camper and keep those tanks warm. Uh, I didn't want to, I could have gone and got a diesel heater. I could have, um, it could have, uh, I could have made it happen. I, I had the available resources. I had somebody that offered me a uh, kerosene, um, a kerosene salamander heater. I had somebody carry, uh, offer me a diesel heater, but I was like, we're used to, we're used to, I mean, we're comfortable with running out of uh, jerry cans. We're comfortable uh, running without running water. We can make it work, especially for a week. And so we decided to drain the tanks. Uh, I kind of went over this last week. And then I insulated the box um, that the hose bib is in. The landowner had stopped by at some point and threw some fiberglass, just a little chunk of fiberglass insulation in there. And then there's a cover on it. Uh, I went uh, beyond that. I ended up putting some Reflectix down in there. So now I had a layer of fiberglass insulation, a layer of the the, the tin reflectix, uh, the foil bubble wrap insulation that was in there. I uh, I stacked a bunch of uh, leaves in there on top of that, and then I put the cover on, which is like a flipped over bus tub with a rock on top of it instead of just the plain lid. I think the lid's probably gone, uh, just to keep stuff out of there. I put that on top, and at the point that I was doing this, there was uh, eight inches of snow. And so I packed the snow around it too. And mine didn't freeze. It didn't freeze. But it sounds like nobody in our town, I don't know if our town, um, our town did a better job of burying the lines a little deeper or um, it just didn't get quite as cold. But uh, our town didn't run out of water yet, yet. Morning, Pickle Pete, 420 Wake Up Call. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's uh, it's time to rise and shine. Um, so we didn't lose water. I don't know when the water is going to be on in these other places. Uh, we had a contingency plan uh, once we could get on the road for water. Uh, once we could drive, which was at, towards the end of last week, I, I talked about my trip out and uh and seeing the roads and seeing why everything was still shut down four or five days later uh but jamie out at uh off-grid ping he he's got a spring out there that he uses for his water and it stayed it stayed liquid it stayed running uh the majority of the time i haven't checked with him in the last day or so but uh when we had our second cold snap but it appeared that it was just going to continually run I, i'm guessing the temperature coming out of that spring is uh is is warm enough that it didn't spring or it didn't freeze so 
I felt like uh, confident that we could get water and in going forward here with the, the weather warming up and being able to drive there. Um, Jamie has offered access to his spring for me if we do run dry. And uh, man, look at that. We're set up to transfer 70 gallons in my truck. So we're okay. We're okay with water. I don't know what the rest of these people do. I don't know what the rest of the folks around here are doing. I see that um, the local municipalities, the local fire departments and emergency management services are giving away cases of water, gallons of water, but they're running out uh, rather early in the day. They don't have a ton. Uh, and I saw a couple of posts on the local fo fo uh, Facebook groups yesterday that people are going to start giving away water on Tuesday. They're preparing to be like they had to make arrangements to get the water in, but they're still they're still planning on giving away water on Tuesday. So that tells me they're not predicting the water to be back on anytime soon. Which it's guys, this thing that the shit that blows my mind is it was eight inches of snow and six days of cold. It wasn't that ex extreme. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know. K-Box says, are they buying it at the dollar store? I don't know where they're buying it. I don't know where they're getting it. I know the one per, the one place I saw was a restaurant and they're getting it brought in with their food order. Um, they worked with their supplier and their, uh, their supplier and their, um, uh, and their, uh, trucking company. And they were going to bring in water to distribute from the restaurant. I, I don't know. It's, um, and it's been days already. I don't know what the, what the deal is. So it sounds like all the pipes break everybody. So first of all, everybody was dripping. Um, Everything was, um, <laughs> that's true. Pip says in Florida, if the hurricane didn't hit you, you get back to work. And Dixon says not extreme for someone who's dealt with it before as part of daily life. Yeah. I mean, I guess, I guess I was out and about. It was funny. It was funny. Um, that's, that's so the water is what it is, guys. I don't know yet. Um, we'll see today when the when the frost when the frost comes out. <laughs> I still have to chuckle. Um, I still have to chuckle. <laughs> K Bong says, "What a waste! Springs are free. Yeah, when you have one, when you have one." Uh, I'll uh, I'll keep you guys updated on the water situation. <laughs> but um, Friday, I was out, and this will this will roll into uh, something else I had on the list here. Friday, I was out. Um, <laughs> Friday, I was out checking at the post office. I was supposed to get some packages in uh, Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, nothing. I didn't go Wednesday. Thursday was the first day I got out uh, and I stopped at the post office. There was nothing there. Friday, uh, I stopped at the post office. There was nothing there. Saturday, she's like, Saturday, they're open from 930 to 1130. And so she's like, yeah, swing in, swing in if you're out. Uh, I was like, all right, well, I will. Otherwise, I'll stop on Monday. And so I swing into the post office and I pop my head in and um, I was like, hey, any anything show up? She's like, no. And honestly, I haven't gotten any mail here at the post office in four days. I was like, what? <laughs> She's like, I haven't gotten any letter mail. I haven't gotten any parcel mail. She's like, the whole state is shut down. The post office is not doing moving anything. She's like, Memphis is shut down. The distribution center in Memphis is shut down. And every other small post office in the whole region is shut down. Nothing's moving. I haven't received anything in four days. And nothing's gone out in four days. And I'm like, wait, wait. Um what and pip nails it pip nails it nor rain nor sleet nor oh it got cold and it and a little icy so he just stopped <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
Canadian farm said, nor wind, nor rain, nor sleep. <laughs> sleep. <laughs> I will keep this carrier from his root. <laughs> yeah. And so I was like, what? Four days? Like, I had been out on the road for three days at that point. Like, no problem. And my truck sucks. I get stuck all the time. And I was fine. Uh, it was, I probably would have been all right maybe a day earlier maybe uh it was icy monday and tuesday i'm not gonna lie with the the snow and then the freeze it was icy but um man four days worth i was like holy crap and then i was like well what's the what's the aftermath of this because all i'm doing is picturing like a uh i'm picturing a airport when they start canceling flights and then the backlog and how many days it takes to get caught back up. Kyle, Kyle, Jesus. No one's walking in Memphis. <laughs> They're all on their ass. They all fell on their ass. <laughs> but I walked in. So I'm standing there talking to the post office lady because she was by herself. Like, no one's out. I mean, the, the roads, the road, the main roads are completely dry. And no one's out. So I'm standing there talking to the post office lady. Her, her car is stuck in a ditch for the third time. And she can't get out of her town. She can't, um, she can't uh, get out of her area. Um, K-Bong says, isn't Memphis FedEx Central? I don't know, but UPS is shut down too. I have stuff coming UPS. And that just like immediately went to a halt. That's not moving. USPS isn't moving. I don't. I haven't gotten anything FedEx tracking, so I don't know about FedEx moving. But yeah, it was just like it's a standstill, um, and not our town, not just our town. I see people in groups from Camden, a uh, little larger, and Savannah. She said so. Our post office lady works um, works at both the Savannah post office and the one here in town, half and half each day. And she said she hadn't been getting mail in Savannah. Good morning, MSU Rifle. How we doing? Uh, he says, none of it has affected me. Just heard about the water from friends yesterday. But I will say I moved to the area in 93 and have not seen weather like this here before. Yeah, I think it was 94 is what the, the post office lady was saying. And he says it's also been a week since he's gotten mail at home or the office. Yeah, it just blows my mind. It just blows my mind. Uh, but as I was standing there talking to the post office lady, a gentleman walks in and she told me, she's like, there's other people waiting for packages. Like, you're not the only one that's been like, I feel sometimes like I stop in there. I'm like, Hey, do I got anything? And she's like, no, there's a bunch of you. There's like uh, multiple people waiting for stuff. And so as I'm standing there, one of the other customers that's waiting for a package to show up. And I'm thinking that it might be like medication through the mail. <laughs> Scary. Prep up, folks. <coughs> Prep up. Um, he came in and she just shakes her head and he's like, what is going on? I go, yeah, you know, um, I'm from Minnesota and we would have eight inches in the forecast and we wouldn't even blink our eyes. We wouldn't shovel our driveway. You wouldn't even it wouldn't even blip your radar if we got had eight inches, 10 inches in the forecast. It was like a foot was the standard. Oh, we're going to get a, a foot? No, oh, well, we might want to think about clearing stuff off. Um, maybe, maybe, if we actually get a foot. <laughs> like, that was the attitude there. Here we got eight inches and a cold snap for a few days, and the shit's still shut down. And he just starts laughing, and he's like, yeah, I lived in Rhode Island and Pennsylvania, and I was just like, I know what you mean, man. <laughs> We were just like, what's going on? And sure as shit, we were the only two out driving around. <laughs> but, so USPS is shut down. Uh, I got a pile of stuff coming. I told the, I told the lady, I said, I try to make sure that it, it just doesn't overload you. Like the guy doesn't show up from the other post office and he has like a cart full of my stuff. Um, but man, it's all stacked now. I think I have. I think I have seven things showing up and they'll probably all drop. <laughs> they'll probably all drop today. I'll show up and she's going to be like, all your stuff's here. 
Ha says, bet they deliver in Alaska without any problems. Me too. Um, you know, in War Road, Minnesota, the the post office guy doesn't even use a vehicle. He uses a snowmobile from like uh, December to December to March or something like that. Once the streets, once the streets have uh, snow cover and snowpack on them, he just uses a snowmobile to deliver the mail. From what I understand. And why are there no why are there no plows in this whole state? You would think you would think you could have like one. I, I was talking about it Friday, I think. You would think that there could be one. You think there could be one per the area, for the county. Maybe two. Maybe some salt, maybe one salt truck. The retrofit on a salt truck or to put a plow on a a dump truck is is not that extreme. Maybe you use it every couple years, every five years. You can use it for other things. You can use it to move protesters. You can use it to move um, um, deadfall, like trees after a storm. You can use it for a bunch of stuff. But why don't we have a couple? And why haven't we figured out water problems? <laughs> Dixon says Billy's pickups broke down. <laughs> Backwoods says next year you need to pick up a plow and make a fortune. You know what, man? Um, I saw some people posting uh, posting ads for shoveling snow, and I was like, if I had a fucking snow shovel, I would I wouldn't have to work for a couple weeks. Like I would have gone and shoveled snow. It wasn't it was eight inches. It like wasn't a lot by any means. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. Um, and. Yeah, K Monk says cost analysis. I mean, I get it. I get it, but that's like it's not like it goes bad. It, it, it like you can get the you can get the mounter, you can get the mounting bracket and the plow, and it is what it is. I'm not saying that they needed to have shit open immediately like they did in um in Minnesota or someplace where it snows a lot, but man, a week. A week, school still closed. I saw this uh, yesterday. That school is closed today uh, in most of the counties around me in the general vicinity. That's a week. They've been out of school for over a week because it happened. Yeah, last Monday would have been the first day they were they were off for eight inches of snow. Fuck, <laughs> oh, man. So what did it teach me? Um, if we're if we're going to buy a property here in Minnesota or in Minnesota, if we're going to buy a property here in Tennessee, and we're going to make it our our home base, which is the plan, uh, the place uh, like where we can fall back on as we go out and venture and look for more properties and set up things and travel. Uh, we always want that one spot that we can get back to that we have enough cash on hand or resources to make it back there. If we're a thousand miles away, if we're 1500 miles away, we know we can make it back to home base where we have a small cabin, where we have a little bit of stores. We have the infrastructure set up to just start and, uh, and survive. What it means to me is I need my own power. Um, I don't think the power has gone out. I don't know. Uh, I'm guessing this upcoming week where it's supposed to rain four inches in the next week um, after a freeze, make some trees come down. I'm, I'm not confident that we're going to have power consistently, but we do have our solar system generator and all of that. So we're pretty we're pretty insulated from power right now. But definitely, uh, when we buy that property, I don't care if it has power to the lot or not. Uh, I'm not relying on on their power here. Um, we will definitely want to have a spring, have access to a spring, or be situated to where we can get a well put in. Oh, well, hi, Wind Kryptonite. I appreciate you swinging in on Twitch. Hunter, you got a friend over there now. Um, and yes, I am a full-time RVer. I am a full-time RVer. Thanks for thanks for swinging in. Um, but when we when we buy our property, I think uh, water and and power are are our main objectives and shelter. 
Um, I'm not. <laughs> no problem, Hunter. <laughs> um, I'm not relying on any of it here. You would think that in in Tennessee, with all the water around, that it, immediately every place didn't run out of water. So that was an eye opener. That was an eye opener for sure. So I've never had water problems. I've never had in any place I've ever been. I've never had like other than oh we're we're doing some maintenance on the apartment building. Your water is going to be off for six hours. Like that's that's in my life um, the biggest uh, the biggest problem that I ever dealt with, with, with water was yeah, a couple hours. So, Hey, thanks. Uh, says, uh, when kryptonite over on Twitch says, uh, what you're describing is exactly what my wife and I are aiming for. Awesome. Follow my YouTube channel and all my socials, man. If you go to the lots uh, all my social links are up at the top and there's all sorts of information there. Love to have you along. You can join the telegram group. we got a great group of people there that, uh, that talk all about, uh, self-sufficiency, uh, and a bunch of bullshit besides that too. So, uh, pretty much over, uh, talking about everything, everything that, uh, that it goes on in my life. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just ask everybody in the audience what, uh, what we talk about here. <laughs> um, so yeah, this, this, this upcoming week, we're supposed to get, uh, we're supposed to get three to four inches of rain. It's supposed to rain consistently for the next six days. And it'll be interesting to see what happens um how how the infrastructure handles it how the the ground handles it how everything handles it i i'm so interested to see um how it goes on how what goes on how how it uh how it, it plays out when the water will be back on around here how that goes um yeah it's it's a it's a different experience for sure. It is definitely a different experience. Uh, with the water, I have to turn our water back on this month, this week. Um, I'm not looking forward to that. When I went under the camper to drain the tanks, now we put the skirting on a couple months ago. I did a I did a um, I did a, a review or a two month follow up video actually yesterday on the skirting and what we thought about it. But when we put the skirting on the on the camper, what it did was made it so I couldn't see under there. So I hadn't been really paying much attention, which is not a good idea. Um, so I have to make it a routine to get at least poke my head under there and do a little uh, a little poking around. Uh, it appeared when I crawled under there that, and I don't know if this was from condensation. It could have been easily condensation because it was so warm in the camper and so cold outside, but I had a drip coming from one of my drain, uh, water drain lines. Uh, so I have lines that, that hang down off the tanks and a low point drain and, and, uh, and that. And so basically it was, um, I didn't get the compressor out or anything like that to blow out the lines. Basically we drained them and left everything open. Uh, so if it froze, it expanded. There was no pressure on the system. Nothing was, nothing was restricted. Uh, and I'm hoping that was sufficient enough to, to get us through. But the fact that I was seeing a drip before it even froze. <laughs> K box says what you didn't mount Wi-Fi cameras in the skirt. Um, I, I mean, maybe now, maybe now I do have, uh, I do have infrared that'll work in the, in the dark. I could, I could easily mount one under there, uh, with a, uh, with a, uh, a thermometer too. But anyway, I was seeing a drip before it even froze. So that wasn't, um, encouraging. We will see. Um, it'll be warm. It'll be warm, and then we're seeing slightly below freezing overnights, like next weekend. So I think I got plenty of time to fill the tank, let it sit, kind of get under there and inspect uh, what's going on, and fix anything that's that's gone sideways. Corey and I, I told her, um, man, if the system's blown up, like if I have to do some plumbing, if I have to do some repairs, at least we're used to running out of jugs right now, and 
it'll get easier. It's going to get easier if I can leave the hose hooked up to the hose bib uh, and just walk out the door and fill the jugs. Uh, just walk out the door and um, and use the hose. It'll get much easier than dealing with it in the cold. But yeah, I, I'm trying to decide if I'm going to be doing that today or tomorrow. But the whole thing, getting everything on and filled and fixed and everything is going to have to happen in the span of when we're supposed to get that three to four inches of rain. So it's going to be fun, guys. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, there isn't a whole lot of room under the camper. Where we're parked, we're kind of on a, a slope. So where... Um... <laughs> Chris Dixon says, power just blipped here. Can you repeat the last three minutes? It's going to suck to fix my water if it's broken. <laughs> I just got it the last three minutes. Um, yeah. So I'm curious. I'm curious how we are. I'm curious where that drip was coming from. Uh, we're also going to find any drips in the, in the ceiling, any leaks in the roof. Uh, and any, any places where water is going to intrude because we're going to get a shitload of water real quick. And we have still have some ice and snow and stuff on the top. Yeah, it's going to get interesting. It's definitely going to get interesting. Um, getting under the camper for me right now is not ideal. There isn't a whole lot of extra room. Basically, if I lay on my side shoulder up, I have to scrunch my shoulders together to roll over. So I, as a large guy, as a large uh, six foot five, over 250 pound guy, it's not ideal for me to be sliding under that tiny space. And actually, when we put the skirting on to secure it, Corey volunteered to go under there and uh, install all the, the hold down wood. <coughs> Chris Dixon says four inches of rain will show you leaks you'll never fix. Yeah. And that's the thing. <laughs> that is the thing. Um, and where is the leak? Cause I'll tell you sure as shit, I'm not going up on the top of the camper to figure out where it's coming from in, in a downpour. <laughs> like right now we had a little drip around one of the window uh, around the skylight and I was going to go up and check it out. And I was like, I don't know if I want to walk on that roof with all the weight that's up there right now because we have a layer of ice and a layer of snow up there. That's pretty thick. And I was like, I don't know. I, I mean, it'll just have to wait. It'll have to wait for sure. So we'll find out we'll get through it by any means. I mean, it's, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not the end of the world for sure. Um, I'm exhausted. I'm, I was so excited to sleep all night last night. Uh, for the last week, Corey and I have been on fire duty rotation uh, basically both of us get up, uh, we alternate every two hours, two to two and a half hours to get up and, uh, and stoke the little wood stove. Cause we can't get a huge fire going, uh, and put a whole lot of logs in there. It was, um, so we came to the determination. We determined, <laughs> we determined that two hours was about the, t the, the burn, um, with it wide open and full with nice dry uh, oak. So we set our schedule so we could each get four hours of sleep at a time. Good morning, John Palmer. Thanks for swinging in. Um, so we we kind of set up schedule. I would stay up till 10. Corey would get up at 12.15. Uh, and then I would get up at 2.30. So we were going two hours and 15 minutes. And when I would get up at 2.30-ish, um, there was a decent coal bed. And I would either, it would either fire right off. Um, <laughs> it would either fire right off or maybe I threw a fire starter in, but it would come back up. It would, it would, uh, it would relight uh, pretty easily. Corey, a few mornings in a row, got up at 5.45 5.40, or 6 o'clock. I don't know. It was two hour, two hours and 30 minutes instead of two hours and 15 minutes. And that 15 minute difference, the thing would be completely out. In 15 minutes, the extra, the stove would be completely out. Uh, and Saturday when we woke up in here, it was like 34 degrees. Sunday when we woke up in here, it was like 34 to 36. Yeah, it was fucking cold, guys. It was cold. 
Uh, and it was just a matter of 15 minutes difference in that stove. Uh, completely went out and cooled off. That's how cold it was um, dealing with it here. I can't wait to have a cabin with insulation and a little bigger stove. I really like this. Kyle says, I'm going to start calling my two-year-old little wood stove because I have to deal with her all night. <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> a Canadian farm says, this sounds like you need better fencing. <laughs> oh uh yeah yesterday morning i went out to the pee and it, it felt warmer outside than it did in here <laughs> i think it was a yesterday morning i don't know dixon says once i get a man-sized stove i'll be set once i get a man-sized um living living facility and i can fit a stove in it like if we put a if we put a regular size wood stove in here, a uh, we wouldn't even be able to fill it all the way because we would be sweating. We would be in here in our in our underwear sweating. And uh, two, I don't know where we would put it. I don't know where, but yeah, we're uh, we're starting to poke around at cabin plans. Corey and I are talking about that. Uh, what we want to get up something simple, straightforward. We're thinking maybe like a fourteen by twenty room uh with plans to throw on a little um some some side rooms and some different things that uh, that we'll put into the mix but i think originally once we have a, a piece of property the first thing that will happen will be a uh, actually the first thing that'll happen will be access to to drag the trailer onto the property and then uh probably go a 14 by 20 room uh at open concept and then and then go from there so John Palmer says my heater couldn't keep up when I woke up last Sunday morning. It was 72 and we were freezing. <laughs> 72. Corey and I were excited when it got up to 70 in here yesterday with the sun beating on the sun beating on the trailer and um and the and the wood stove going still. It got up to 70 in here. We've been riding between between 50 and 65 for the whole cold snap, uh running this but just the wood stove. Corey uses the small electric heater back uh, within back in the far back when she works during the week, just for a, a little added heat because our our stove is in the middle and and we have on the top um, the eco fan on the top blows towards me, uh, not back. So she only has radiant heat through a little doorway, and it is significantly colder back there. So uh, we ended up getting her a, a little space heater and yesterday morning we actually brought the space heater out and uh, used it in the in the main room since since the stove had gone out and, and like i said it was like 34 or 35 degrees in the in the camper when we were trying to have coffee and yeah so it was just a little uncomfortable <laughs> but you adapt you adapt for sure john says they usually keep it around 78 to 80 inside year round are you like in your underwear do you do you live naked? Because I couldn't do seventy eight to eighty inside all year round. I mean, I guess you, I guess you get used to it. I guess you get used to it. Uh, Hunter asked if the electric is on the price or you have a meter. We have a meter. We pay electric each month, uh, and it's 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 inexpensive. It's inexpensive, and this uh, this little electric heater won't be any different. Uh, or we don't. I'm waiting for the bill, but uh, Corey and I have talked about it, and I'm pretty sure it won't be any any more significant than running the air conditioner all all day for weeks on end for the dogs in the summer. And that's another thing we're excited uh, for a, a better insulated living structure um, and um, a little better insulated living structure and getting a more efficient cooling system. So a uh, mini split, something like that is going to be is going to be in the plans for that new that new structure basically for the dogs and i guess it's nice when it's cooler and we can uh, can um enjoy and sleep well uh haas is asking if you're gonna get solar yeah yeah i mean we have it here so kind of the plan the the plan that um is coming to light the plan Canadian farm says sounds like you need a basement for the dogs. That would be, that would be phenomenal. I don't know if I want to dig a basement, but um, the plan kind of looks like picking up a property around here, getting able to pull the trailer onto it, sit down, build a small cabin and, and start that process. 
and then take off with the trailer to find uh, another property, property number two, and kind of lean on the fact that at that point, we'll probably need to definitely be getting into a new trailer. Um, smaller, better, newer, I guess. Uh, more what we need uh, than what we found. Like, this is way too big. We know it's way too big. We don't, we don't want to continue to to drag it around we would like something smaller and more agile to go different places so the second property we will likely get this there and and set it down if if uh, i mean this is all funds related obviously uh if the money is there but uh ideally we would be able to set this down as a structure um and remodel it or get it to uh, livable um because it'll be so much different to remodel it if it's not going to be traveling uh there's so much more you can do if you're not going to be putting the slides in and dragging it down the road but uh kind of set that up as another structure on a different property somewhere and pick up a smaller more nimble trailer and move around john palmer says something with better insulation yeah, or just easier and less expensive to drag around to places that don't need the insulation. I mean, that's that's ideal. We're just way big. It costs us so much money to drag it around. And it's getting to the point where we're seeing things that um, will probably be become bigger issues sooner rather than later, especially with putting a lot of miles on it. So we're tempering expectations on the on the life of the trailer and really coming up with contingencies contingencies if shit goes sideways with it um yeah anytime anytime so really uh really looking at the future and making short-term and long-term plans and as the long-term plans play out if if we need to adjust on the fly we're we're pretty good at that so that's uh that's kind of what we're looking at uh, I think every place that we buy, every every property we have will be self uh, self contained. It'll be solar. It'll be um, well or spring or like avoiding all the things that uh, we found out today. Hey, Chris Dixon, have uh, have an awesome have an awesome day. Thanks for swinging in. Have a great week too, and uh, <laughs> I appreciate the luck with the seasonal weather. Bitcoin is below 41,000 guys for sure. And uh, I also wanted to mention, I was going to mention a little earlier, if you guys wanted to go to SRF, we got early bird pricing on sale right now. That's going to be April 6th and 7th, I believe. April 6th and 7th in Camden, Tennessee. I'm going to be there. Toolman Tim's going to be there. A lot of other people be there speaking, presenting, hanging out, networking. Uh, just dropped a link in the video notes. It's also in the audio notes and the replay notes. Um, that's an affiliate link. So if you're going to pick up your tickets and you're going to go anyway, definitely pick up your tickets from my link, save some money on early bird pricing. And I get a little bit of commission back. So that would be awesome. Pa says that just means buy more. Yeah, we'll be my, buying more solar, I'm sure. And setting it up different. And it's really cool to have, um, Sean Mills in the community as a resource. He has definitely got his, uh, he's got everything uh, uh, figured out and dialed in with the solar. Uh, and what a great reference to be able to, to talk to. K-Box says stack them sats. Absolutely stack them while it's on sale, guys. Stack them while it's on sale. Uh, yeah, other than that, I think this week we're going to get back to talking the Daily Stoic. I, uh, I hit it a couple times this weekend um every day every day i'm enjoying it it's it's definitely something to ponder it's something to meditate on it's something to think about and it's all adding up to be a better a better me hopefully in the end uh and uh, yesterday got a week two report out it published sunday at noon i'm going to try to get those uh, amazon influencer weekly reports published every sunday at noon uh, week two went up yesterday. Still dialing in uh, the audio, still s dialing in um, the videos. I'm hoping by uh, by the end of the year, these videos, these weekly report videos are just going to be phenomenal. Uh, but muddling my way through it at the beginning, don't let perfect be the, uh, be the opposite of getting it anything up, I guess. Don't let perfect be the enemy of done. That's what it was. That's what it was. <laughs> 
anyway anyway let's wrap it up we're an hour in i gotta get out we're gonna get the dogs walked i got a shitload of stuff to do and uh, get to the post office get a bunch of products here get them open start making videos roll into the week guys we will see we will see what comes of the weather i appreciate you hanging out this morning uh and listening if you enjoyed the show it's always free to hit that like share and subscribe to return value for value please consider joining one of the youtube membership tiers for the coffee crew or listening on any value for value platform like podverse wave lake or fountain.fm visit the lotsproject.com to find more information or find all my links um Hey, stay warm, guys. It's warming up here. Everything's going to melt off, and then it's going to start raining for the week. Come on back. Let's see if we're loading up on the boat. See if we're getting our, sw- our uh, water wings, our swimmies, or what's going on. Guys, I appreciate hanging out, and we will catch up with you tomorrow. I can feel the sound